Today we are looking at this Aqua 240 ARGB water cooler from Cougar. On the front of the box you can see the actual water cooler, you can see the ARGB lighting around the water block and on the fans. It also tells you on there what ARGB software it will work with and it's got a five year warranty. On the side of the box it tells you the specifications and what sockets it works with. On the back of the box it tells you about the controller and the motherboard synchronization as well as the vibrant and dazzling ARGB as well as some performance information about the fan. Okay, so it looks like Tesco is going to be running out of plastic bags this year because Cougar has used all the plastic up wrapping its products. There's plastic bags around absolutely everything in there, with the exception of the manual. Not sure why the manual didn't get a bag and why that was excluded, but everything, fans, cooler, even the controller which is inside the bag has already got another bag around it, as well as some of the screws which are in separate bags as well. Too much plastic. Windows 11, powerful, productive, and profitable for resellers. Windows 11 was built with usability, efficiency, and security in mind, reimagining the way a PC should work. Windows 11 has been beautifully simplified with a streamlined UI. It's simple to upgrade. VIP is your destination for genuine Windows 11. Contact your VIP account manager for the latest price and unbundled deals. Okay, so first of all, lots of cable in here. So you've got cables absolutely everywhere. I wish it was more like, for example, the Arctic freezers or the liquid freezers we've looked at in the past where all the cabling goes through the tubing and everything like that. And it basically you just have one or two cables coming out of the actual water block. Because on here, what you have to do is you have to basically connect this fan to that one with the PWM splitter and then plug that into your motherboard. So that's one cable there, obviously connecting via two cables or one on each. And then you have to connect the RGB up to this one again by daisy chaining it using this connector here. So that plugs into there. And then you have to plug the other fan into there. So it's a lot of cabling in all reality uh, for just connecting up the fans. And then you've got obviously the free cables on the water block. And just bear in mind on the water block, just notice there's another piece of plastic. They do like their plastic. Anyway, um, getting back to the subject, we've got one cable which we mentioned, which is for the ARGB for powering it. You've also got an ARGB cable coming out of the water cooler to connect up to your motherboard or your controller, which is going to do that. You can also daisy chain it as well. It is double sided. Again, it is ARGB connection not rgb which basically means it needs to be a five volt argb header on your motherboard which is basically three pins it looks like two pins missing one and then one pin you should see a diagram on the screen in front of you and then it also has to plug into a sata power connection as well to power the actual pump okay so let's have a look at the fans we've got two fans these are the vortex va 120s obviously 120 mil fans the nine bladed, so obviously nine blades, which are got, sort of got a ribbed effect to help push the air through. So that should hopefully help cool the, uh, the radiator down. They do have rubberized corners on both sides, as you can see here, here and here. It does have sort of a ribbed effect around the edge as well, which, well, isn't really going to uh, do anything for the performance. It's more for looks, but there you go. Okay, so let's have a look at the water block and the tubing. Tubing first, it is braided, so that's nice. Gives it a bit of a premium finish, but it would have been nice if they would have routed all the cabling or most of the cabling, for example, the RGB and the fans, all the way through the cabling. That way it would have looked a little bit neater and not needed a lot of the cabling, what we're going to need with the fans and everything like that. The water block itself, as you can see, it's got the Cougar logo there. Uh, this white bit here and the central white bits will obviously change colour or be or light up with RGB and so forth, so pretty straightforward. The tubing does rotate on the water block, which is pretty standard, obviously, so it fits in with your case and so forth. On the bottom, we've got more plastic protecting the copper. I'll let them off with that bit, uh, but there we go. So you can see the copper base there. It does have a few little marks on it. And you can actually see the, like, the rivets actually through the copper. Uh, but otherwise, not too bad, to be honest with you. 
Okay, the radiator doesn't look anything special, to be honest. It looks like most radiators. It does seem quite light, to be honest with you. It's as if they forgot to put water in there. But uh, don't get me wrong, there is water in there. It just feels very light. It is quite dense, so you can't easily see through it, which usually means that's going to be good because that's more surface area, which means it's going to get cooler. So, so all in all, it's pretty good. So otherwise, not much else to write about on it. Uh, other than you can attach your fans on either a push or a pull configuration if you wanted, or if you wanted to get very adventurous, you could potentially add another two fans. So you've got four fans in a full push-pull configuration, which we have reviewed things like that in the past, if you were interested in watching. Okay, so down to testing first. So testing results were pretty good, actually. We tested it on a i7 12700k processor which is renowned to get overly hot um, well pretty much like most of the 12th gen k processors to be honest with you and at 50 percent fan speed obviously that's where we set the fan to run at 50 percent for 30 minutes while the cpu was under full load running cinebench we got an average temperature of 71 degrees Celsius and a peak temperature of 85 degrees Celsius. When we turned the fan up to 100%, the average temperature dropped to 66 degrees Celsius with a peak of 81, which is still very, very good. Bear in mind, most computers are never used with a processor running 100% for 30 minutes. We even did a, a bit of light overclocking, set the performance course to 4.8 gigahertz, and we got 73 degrees Celsius as an average and a peak of 90, which is well within uh, specifications, and it didn't cause cause any thermal throttling or slowing down of the CPU in any way. So in conclusion, what do we have here? We have a very good value water cooler if you can obviously get it at a good price. It does come with the RGB. Obviously, you can turn the RGB off if you don't want it on. So ideal for anyone who doesn't like RGB. Uh, mainly negatives obviously lots of packaging plastic in there get rid of that it's 2022 that all needs to be gone for future products and on top of that there's a lot of cable in there a bit too much for my liking okay yes you can hide it behind the motherboard tray and everything like that but still there's basically three cables coming from the cpu which you've got to go all over the place or should i say the water block um which is can look a little bit of a mess in all honesty but other than that it performs very well it's a good price so yeah i do recommend it if you can get it for a good price if you're interested in learning more about cougars you could click up here otherwise if you want to learn more about water cooling products we reviewed in the past you could click just over here